it's Jen with Astro 2 Astrology. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the full moon in Gemini. It's the full beaver moon um, on November 27th and that is at 4.16 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time um, here in New England at 4 degrees 51 minutes of Gemini. Um, we're going to go through all the signs and talk about uh, what this might mean for you, uh, for your sun and rising, so stay tuned to the end. Um, so this is the beaver moon. This is about uh, rodents and animals that are preparing for the winter season, seeking shelter. So that's kind of what that's all about. So, um, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I sure did. I ran a race in the morning and I was hurt, so it really was painful, but got through it and then was able to stuff my face. So felt really good. Um, hope y'all had a good time and watched out for that, uh, that square that we had, the sun was Saturn and that we had no real fights or issues around the Thanksgiving table. Um, so, uh, now speaking about the full moon in Gemini. Uh, so the other things we have going on during this, we have a, um, up here, you can see we have the sun and Mars conjunction in Sagittarius. And this is opposite the moon down here. Um, okay, yeah, I know Uranus is not in Gemini, but it's holding up my moon because my Velcro got lost. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, and it's opposite, uh, and that is in a separating T-square with Saturn that is in Pisces up here. Um, it would be very beginning degrees of Pisces. So we also have going on is Venus over here in Libra, and that is opposite the North Node, so that means it is conjunct the South Node. So, you know, what does this all mean? Let's put it all together. So, um, so this is about communication, which is very Gemini. So if you think Gemini, you think communication, think technology, short-term travel maybe, even little day trips. Um, so this began with the new moon back in June 18th of 2023. So what themes were beginning around then? Um, you know, so this can be something adapting that you were adapting to, maybe that busy work, entertainment even. Um, this is all about also a duality. So Gemini is the twins. So it's kind of two personalities and Gemini does get a bad rap in a way with this um, because they sometimes can be, you say Gemini's can be two-faced or kind of backstabby because they're saying one thing to one person, one thing to another. Um, so, you know, let's look at that. So what maybe around June, um, has there been like a purse that started around June that you've kind of been looking into a little bit, the kind of you've been trying to get all the information. Gemini is about gathering that information. Has there been a person in your life that, you know, maybe says one thing, does another? Um, you know, we have that Mars Sun conjunction up here in Sagittarius, uh, Moon and Gemini in that separating T-square with Saturn. So <clears throat> with the T-square, uh, it's kind of like the anchor is the you know, we have the opposition first and then each square, each, you know, opposition will square. So we have the opposition with the sun and the moon, the full moon, obviously. And then we have it, them both square with Saturn here that's um, in Pisces. So that's kind of like the anchor. So something that you might have been working towards, uh, ideas or figuring, you know, figuring out information, Gemini's about kind of learning all they can and getting all the information before kind of making a decision on something or kind of making, um, you know, they, they want to be informed. Gemini's very intuitive and very, you know, digging and they want to know everything they can know about something. So you want to know and figure out what's good information against, you know, maybe false narratives. Uh, Saturn is kind of putting on the brakes there. In Pisces, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so there's a lot of information that you might be getting. Uh, you aren't really sure which way is up, what's real, what's not real, what's, you know, fake news or whatever. So, you know, you want to just, you know, continue that learning, but, you know, be sure that you know where you're getting this information from because, you know, even with some, you know, a lot of political stuff going on right now, uh, crazy stuff in the world going on right now, really intense 
things going on, but it can be something as simple as astrology. You know, say you're doing astrology and you're trying to figure out, oh, I have the North Node conjunct my Saturn in my, you know, transiting my Saturn in my birth chart. What does that mean? So you go ahead and Google it. Well, Googling is not always the best information. So sometimes, you know, you want to really just get the right information, buy some books, buy the, you know, traditional maybe if you're into that. You know, you don't want to just Google something. You want to, you know, get all the information that you can um, just so you can make a good, uh, rational, in informed decision. Um, so we have Venus in Libra over here. So I don't have my south node up, but because it is opposite the north node, we know it is conjunct the south node. Um, so uh, you're having trouble maybe uh, utilizing the information um, and putting it out there. So Libra, you know, maybe you're afraid of ruffling feathers. You know how Libra can be. Libra wants to make everything harmonious. So Libra doesn't like to rustle feathers, doesn't like to stir the pot. Um, they like to keep things all nice and kosher and harmonious and just happy, happy, everyone happy. Um, and conjunct that south node, that really emphasizes that because if the south node is about, you know, being where your comfort, being in your comfort zone instead of like moving forward towards your goals. So maybe that, that Libra conjunct the South Node or that Venus conjunct the South Node and Libra is really kind of holding you back from moving forward because you say, if I do this, then, you know, people are going to get mad at me or, you know, this might happen if I tell this is going on, you know, for instance, say, you know, you're out, you've been out you know, maybe back in June and you saw your friend's boyfriend out with another girl. So, you know, you start doing some digging on it you want to figure out okay you know was he doing something or did you know i just you know bad thing at the bad time so maybe you start asking around this is about gathering the information gemini gathering information but that saturn so some people you might be hearing like maybe they don't like him and they're like oh he's a sleazeball like he's out with a different girl every night she doesn't know what's going on or you know then other people are like oh no that was just a friend that he ran into that was nothing so Take where you're getting this information from and, you know, it's, it's all about the source. It's all about where you're getting it from. So you want to make sure you're getting, the, you know, good information. So, you know, this can be in any type of, but, you know, you think Venus in Libra, you think relationships. Um, and then we have, you know, the Sagittarius and Gemini. It's, just, it's all about gathering information um, and, and you using it to your benefit. Um, so, you know, are you going to move forward with this knowledge? Are you going to, so what's been building? You know, if you found that out back in June and now that we're kind of at this full moon stage, are you going to tell your friend, say, if this is the example, that, you know, dude, this guy is totally a player and you need to get out? Or are you going to, you know, okay, so if I do do that, then it's going to break her heart. She's going to be so sad. She really likes this guy. So that's that Libra. You know what? I'm just going to keep things harmonious. She seems happy. And you know what? What she doesn't know won't hurt her. So that's what you have to kind of wrestle with a little bit with this, with this kind of full moon. So you know, it could be anything in your chart. But say it's that, for example. It's kind of a good example, I guess. Um, so let's think of another example. Um, so back in June, there you know, again, something fishy going on, something suspect, suspicious, unclear, maybe. Uh, Saturn had entered Pisces back on March 7th. So this is when maybe things started to get a little bit like, hmm, boundaries and you know, rules becoming a little more lax, boundaries a little bit skewed, if not completely broken down. Um, so then the new moon in Gemini was on June 18th. So on a mundane level, you know, this has us as a group, as a as a, you know, nation, as a world, as a, you know, planet Earth looking for answers. So another example, shortly after Saturn ingressed into Pisces uh, in May, you know, so it was in March, then May, uh, the Supreme Court, so this is more on a mundane level kind of an example, uh, the Supreme Court came out um, 
with that memo about you know something about you know changing the abortion laws and you know getting rid of Roe versus Wade. Uh, so what did this mean? So it's like, okay, so who put this out? Let's find out who put this memo out and what does this mean? Are they really going to do this? So this is when, you know, things start getting stirred up. We want to find out more information. What's going to happen now? Are, you know, you know, people are saying, oh my God, is abortion going to be illegal? What am I, you know, what am I going to do if I have an issue? And then there's other people on the other side who are like, oh, thank God, you know, I don't want to, kill these babies and we want to save life and it's all precious life so then you have you know that conflicting information you know some people saying like oh you know this is happening in this state and then this is happening in this state you know we have those boundaries and you think of Saturn those boundary lines so you know people are saying well I'm in this state and they're having these rules so I'm gonna go over to this state because they don't have these rules so can see how that kind of plays out even on a mundane level here in the United States. Uh, so, you know, changing of laws. Uh, different states started making more stricter laws or a little bit more lenient laws because, you know, so dropping laws, you know, this is very Saturn, you know, in Pisces, changing, being adaptable, um, or maybe being more strict. Um, so, again, going outside of one state to another. So, um, so let's look at how this full moon might affect you in your life. So we're going to go by um, rising or sun sign and the house that that might fall in. So if you are, you know, we're going to start because um, how this new moon falls here, the exact rising sign is in Scorpio, two degrees Scorpio here in New England. So we'll start with Scorpio. Why not? We always start with Aries. Um, so if you are a Scorpio sun or rising, uh, this is going to be taking place in your eighth house. So that's super Scorpio. Um, secrets, taboos, how you're going to rise out of the ashes. So what was happening, some kind of secrets that you really, you know, when Scorpio is about that deep digging and they, you know, Gemini wants to know all the answers, but Scorpio, or Scorpio, they do on a little bit different level. Like they really put their, their emotions into it. Um, how are you going to rise out of the ashes with this new knowledge um, that you're gaining? So now it's at a peak. So what started back then that maybe is kind of coming to a peak? You have this knowledge. How are you going to come out of this? Like, again, you know, are you that person that, you know, found out this about, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever? And what are you going to do about it? How are you going to rise up and handle the situation with this new moon um, or new moon, a full moon? Um, so then we move along to Sagittarius. So if you're Sagittarius, uh, sun or rising, this is going to be in your seventh house of relationships. So, uh, you know, is your relationship is a person saying one thing, doing another, saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to be here, but they're not actually here or there, um, saying I'm going to be there more for you, but they're still maybe working too much. So how is that kind of like you know, giving that Gemini feel, going that back and forth, um, you know, and then with that Sagittarius, you know, how are you going to, with being a mutable sign, how are you going to kind of adapt to whatever changes you might need to make that, you know, promises that maybe are empty promises or talking out of both sides of your head or whatever uh, with your partner, how are you, are you going to fix that with this newfound knowledge of, you know, maybe things aren't going to work out, maybe things are going to work out, but we have to change this, that, the other thing. Um, that seventh house. So then we move on to Capricorn, sun or rising. This is going to be happening in your sixth house, your work, everyday work and habits, uh, your health. Um, so maybe there's been something going on since June and you've been going to get, um, you know, a professional opinion. Maybe somebody found something and you're getting, you know, something from one doctor, maybe something else from another doctor and you're just not getting all clear information. You want to, you know, have you pinpointed down what this might mean. Uh, same thing that might be going on in the workplace. Maybe you're trying to do something, um, working with maybe a group and, you know, some are saying one thing, some are saying the other thing. How are you going to bring it all together? How are you going to take the most useful and the most correct information, accurate information? Um, mainly, if they are Cap Capricorn Sun or Rising, uh, keep watch of that health. That's going to be in your sixth house. You know, when you want to, you know, make sure everything you're hearing, you're not, um, 
I know one thing I'm kind of, you know, uh, guilty of is anything that I feel something going wrong, I go right on WebMD and start putting in my symptoms and pretty much I'm dying all the time because so, <laughs> WebMD can be a little extreme. So, you know, you don't want to go to that extreme. You want to get your clear, concise, good information, not just online information. You want to go to a, a reputable person. So. Anyway, uh, Aquarius, sun or rising, we would have this happening in our fifth house. So this house is about dating. It's about fun, uh, going out. So maybe somebody you've been dating, maybe is saying one thing, you know, oh, you know, I want to get married. I want to do this, but maybe they actually don't. They're just kind of, you know, giving you a little tug along. Um, Maybe it's something going on with your children. Maybe if you have older children or even younger children, they're telling you one thing, but they're doing something else. Oh, I'm going over to my friend's house. I'm going to, you know, but they're really sneaking out with their boyfriend or hanging out with maybe a crowd that you don't like. So they're lying and they're saying they're hanging out with somebody you do like. So if there's something that you've noticed about your kids or maybe even your, um, uh, maybe a new fun relationship that maybe started around the June time that's kind of coming to a head right now, you might want to look into that and how are we going to move forward with uh, the, the waiting thereafter. So then we have um, Pisces and Pisces, this is going to be happening in our fourth house. So our fourth house is about our family, our upbringing, parents, um, ancestry even. So maybe finding out something from the past. Did you maybe, you know, something just seemed wrong? You started looking into it. Maybe you did that um, genealogy, uh, 23andMe or any of those, um, you know, those uh, tests, those uh, uh, Oh, I can't think of it, but your genealogy. So maybe you find out something, maybe like, oh my God, like go this, or, you know, I'm not really, you know, I always thought I was, uh, you know, British and I'm actually German or something like that, you know? So maybe it's something like that you start looking into. Maybe you start looking into your history, into your ancestry and found like a little skeletons in the closet. So who knows, you know? Um, and maybe that's going to come to a head right now, you know, with this full moon. And how do you use this information moving forward? And uh, then we have Aries. Uh, so Aries, this is sun arising. This would be happening in your third house. So this would be siblings, even um, neighbors, cousins even. Um, so maybe, you know, something's going on with a neighbor, you know, saying one thing, maybe telling neighbors one thing, telling other ones something else, like a, you know, gossipy little neighborhood. I've had those, um, you know, you have that one lady that just watches everything that goes on and just, oh, look at this one's doing this one, this, you know, and getting all that neighborhood info. Um, siblings, maybe, you know, they're not being quite on the up and up, or maybe you've been kind of like, you know, trying to, uh, you know, talk to them a little bit more, communicate a little bit more. Maybe you haven't really been with them, maybe taking a little bit of a short trip to go visit them. Um, you know, what has come out, even your cousins, yeah, cousins could be in there. If you don't have any uh, siblings, it could be in that. Um, so then Taurus, a Taurus is in your second house. This is about money, um, your things, maybe your investments. So maybe if you're using, um, a specific investor and you're just you don't feel like you're getting the returns that you should did you start looking into this back in June maybe like okay so you know he's not investing right I'm not making the money I should be making or I'm losing money uh, this is the things you really need to look into how are you gonna move forward need to make that decision it's like okay I need to do something about this you know I'm getting mixed information he's saying this but then I'm you know seeing the stock market so that's that mixed information that that Saturn and Pisces kind of unsure of what's going on. What should I do? Should I, you know, pull all my money back and then, you know, what's going to happen then? Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind, that T-square, that Saturn with those skewed kind of, you know, you're unsure of what information you're getting. So then we have um, Gemini. So this would be happening in your first house, Avi. So, um, you know, so if you're a Gemini sun or rising, this is going to be in your first house. So something with yourself. Um, you know, maybe you're, you know, conflicted about something inside. Maybe you, you know, you're letting out false info, trying to cover up info or something like that. You know, just an inner conflict that's going on. You're just unsure of, of 
you know, maybe wanting to move forward, maybe you're wanting to do this, but you're wanting to do this, and that's pulling you back, and that, you know, that um, Libra conjunct this, or Venus conjunct this south node is holding you back, and it's just, you know, I'm not going to rock the feathers, I'm just going to be me, and I don't want to make this big change, so maybe something to do with that. So then we have Cancer. Now, if you're Cancer Sun or Rising, this is going to be happening in your 12th house. So um, maybe something that you've been hiding, something that you've been wrestling with that, you know, you don't want people to know about. Maybe it's an addiction of some sort. Maybe you've been kind of, you know, um, you know, working to get rid of an addiction that you have or, you know, working... You know, you know, maybe keeping a secret inside, something that you don't want people to know, something you're hiding away from people, you're afraid to share it. Maybe it's a revelation that you found out about something, someone, or something that you don't feel like, you know, this could be an issue, this could be big if I let this get out. So your whole, something that you've been really holding in, this is cancer, so this is like your your gut is really telling you, you know, what what is your gut? You want to listen to that, listen to that intuition, listen to what your gut is telling you to do, um, and then go with it. You know, if you feel like you really can't share this, then keep it inside, and then just how are you going to move forward with that information, um, keeping it in, and if your gut is telling you to get it out, then you need to get it out. Follow your gut. This is cancer. Um, so then Leo's um, sun, moon, and rising, this is happening in your 11th house. So this is your friendships. This is your bigger groups, um, your acquaintance groups. So maybe there's, you know, we gossip going on. You know, this is Gemini. It could be gossipy, maybe um, spreading rumors. And, you know, you're not really getting, you know, people are saying this about this one. Oh, did you hear about her? She's this. Oh, my God. You know, she's such a B. And then, oh, then this one. Oh, no, she's great. It's that one. That one's awful. Like, so if you have something going in your friends group, don't just listen to what other people are saying. You want to get the right information. You know, go to that friend, talk to that friend, see if that is really what's going on. You know, if you really think that there might be an issue, you don't want to go ahead and just prejudge somebody without even knowing all the facts. Um, so that's that Saturn with those blurred lines. You're just unsure if that's real. So are you going to just go ahead and believe it or are you just going to, you know, get the facts, you know, be that Gemini and get all the facts. So then we have uh, Virgo happening in, uh, so if you're a Virgo, sun or rising, this is going to be in your 10th house. This is your career, your reputation. So, you know, this is again, similar to, I think the first house where it's, it's something about yourself, you know, maybe that you don't want to get out about your reputation because, oh my God, people find out this about me what are they going to think they're going to judge me so you know or do you want to just stand up and be like you know what blah you know something awful that you think that people are going to think you're a horrible person but you're actually you know not a horrible person it's just the way you are maybe it's just you know what you want to do it's like oh I've been wrestling with this career and you know say I'm an accountant for instance or something like that and I don't want to be an accountant anymore. I want to be an astrologer. So how do I move forward? And I keep this inside because I might be embarrassed. You know, I am, you know, a professional in the workplace and I want to become like an astrologer. Are people going to think I'm weird? So you want to, you know, get all your facts. This is, again, this is Virgo. This is another uh, Mercury ruled sign. So get all your facts. Do your research, you know, find out, you know, and if, if some people think you're crazy, who cares? <laughs> so, you know, that's in your 10th house of reputation. Um, and then finally, we have Libra. If you're a Libra, sun or rising, this is going on in your ninth house. So this is about, you know, things that you're learning, learning, Gemini also, uh, religion. This, um, I find this to be a little bit poignant because it's, it's all about get, gaining knowledge, gaining the correct knowledge. Um, you know, we see this with religions. Maybe it's kind of finding out about religions. We see what's going on in the world right now. So maybe it's prejudging a religion. Maybe you are um, pro, 
you know, Palestine, maybe you're pro-Israel, um, and maybe you just don't know all the facts about the other side, so maybe it's about learning a little more about that. Maybe your facts were a little bit skewed, the things that you've learned, um, or could just be, you know, like that you have been a Christian, and you're kind of looking into becoming a Buddhist, and you're just unsure about it. You want to get all your information together and see, like, is this what's right for me? Um, so that you know again that libra t keeps to to keep things inside or tends to keep things inside they don't want to make waves and you know because once you put that information out there sometimes there's no going back so um how will you now with this knowledge definitely pull your charts up see where this falls in your chart um uh go by your sun or ascendant to an extent um I usually go by ascendant for these, a horoscope, but you can also go by your sun signs, just counting the signs away. So if your sun is in Libra, that is in your, um, then you just count a couple signs away. So you put the sun as your ascendant. If you don't know the time of your birth, you could always use the sun as your ascendant. And so then that would be, say, your first house instead of, you know, your AC. Um, and then you just count the houses away that way. Um, so again, if you want to get a chart from me, I can uh, hook you up for free. So contact me at Astro T Astrology at Gmail or Astro T Astro T Astrology dot net, and I'll be glad to get a chart over to you. So, uh, so you, we would just have to have your birth time, place, and um, uh, date, obviously. And so you know, again, you're going to see this a little more if you're in. Um, one of the mutable signs, um, or even the air signs that's all about gaining knowledge. So, you know, air, we have Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, and then um, mutable signs, we have Gemini, Sag, um, and Virgo. So, how is this going to work out for you? Uh, it'll be nice to hear. So, you know, leave comments in the, or leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you and be sure to subscribe and get notified and I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye.